My name is Chris Mulberry. I am the Assistant Chief Paramedic for Platte Valley Ambulance Service in Brighton, Colorado. Uh, we're a hospital-based system in Brighton. And then we also have a partnership with the fire department that we supply the paramedic and they supply an EMT for the ambulance. So with the combination, we have about a thousand square miles we cover. I think there's the obvious that everybody brings up is that we see the bad and horrible things, um, not always on an everyday basis, but you, you see them on a fairly regular. But I think some of the other things that add a lot of stressors to people in EMS um, are things like the pay, they love the job, but usually, if you ask everybody in EMS, they usually have at least two jobs, sometimes three, um, to be able to make ends meet. Most of us, when we get into EMS, we want to help people, and we go out of our way and we'll do anything to help people. I mean, to the point of sacrificing your own life with, with doing stuff, and a lot of times you forget about taking care of yourself. And I, I think back to people that I've known, they haven't been close friends, but people in EMS that have known that some of the ones that were the most supportive and out there and trying to make sure people get help and um, paying attention to them, they've taken their own lives um, and you never would have suspected. But I think they were also that prime example of they were spending so much time taking care of everybody else and making sure that they were okay, that they didn't make sure that they themselves were okay. EMS is also a macho field. You can't show weakness. And we have a tendency sometimes to eat our young and eat our weak. And instead of being supportive, that like if you show a crack in weakness, then like that means you're not a good provider. You're not gonna provide good clinical care. I think that general perception is there. I mean, whether that's true or not, that's the perception a lot of the time. So people, and they don't wanna be that one that says, well, hey, you know, I feel bad because of this call. My biggest fear is getting that phone call that something's happened to somebody while they're on duty and then thinking about getting the phone call something happened while they were off duty. There was one morning, and this is something I feel very guilty about, um, and I haven't talked a whole lot about this, is that I had, there was one morning laying in bed, they called. And I looked at my phone and I'm like, I don't feel like talking. So I ignored the phone call. Um, and a couple days later, I get a phone call from another friend. Did you hear about so-and-so? I'm like, no. They tried calling me the other day, I forgot to call them back. And they're like, well, you're not gonna be able to call them back. They hung themselves and that day. It was about three or four hours after I got that phone call is when that happened. So I feel guilty thinking about what if I'd answered that phone call? Would I, could I have prevented something from happening um, by having that conversation? So one of the things we started um, three years ago now is we do what we call a safety stand down. It's mandatory for all of our employees to be there, um, and they're not on duty. We bring in other agencies to cover our district. We focus on things with patient safety, and then we always have things about personnel. We try to find other professionals that are very knowledgeable, um, especially in things with mental wellness and resiliency to come in, and we try to find people who are EMS focused. I think you can change the mindset of being open, that somebody comes in, it's like, hey Chris, you know, can I talk to you for a minute? And I'm not paying attention, like, okay, hey, I'm really busy, you know, what do you need? Give me like your one minute synopsis and let me see what I can do to help. You know, and it's not what they need, they need me to sit down and just listen. And, you know, sometimes just going through and, you know, slowing down and paying attention when somebody comes by, I try to, I try to work at that. Senior leadership in EMS needs to be open, needs to be aware, and needs to be willing to work on those kinds of things, not just work on making billing and improving the billing side and improving clinical care, but also paying attention and caring about our people. That when they come looking, and sometimes it masks itself in, in other questions, that they'll come in and say, hey, can I talk to you about this? And that's not really why they're there. And paying attention to being open in how we assess patients, you know, picking up on all the different clues, doing the same thing when our people come and talk to us.